Hello there, I'm Vieno and this is my 11th video tutorial on D3. In this video I want to show you a component, a new component of SVG that we haven't looked at before, which is the path component. And uh, paths are just as rectangles and circles, it's another element that SVG provides us with. But in contrast to um, rectangles and circles, paths can actually be used to create any shape whatsoever that we would like to um, have. So I wanted to begin by showing you what paths look like looks like in the actual source code. So if we inspect a, uh, a visualization right here we can see that it's actually made up of a, diff of a number of different paths and the path data is stored in the D attribute. So I won't I won't go into what this actually means, but this long string, um, the value of the D attribute, this describes what the path looks like. So I think this yeah this first path uh, describes uh, this circle right here. But this is really complex and. Um, it would take forever to write this manually. Thankfully D3 provide, provides us with a number of so-called path generators. So yeah I'll, I'll show you what that looks like in, in, just a, in just a minute. But keep in mind that it is, the, it is the D attribute that actually stores the path data. So if we head over to our text editor right here uh, let's say we want it we have we have some data and we want to draw a line uh, on our web page using that data first of all we need some data so let's uh, create a simple array and since uh, lines are basically just a number of of uh, x and y coordinates will create a data array consisting of a number of objects each having two properties a, an x property and a y property so let's give this some random numbers uh, yeah I don't know Okay, so we have our data, and let's also create a group element. So we'll say canvas append g, and let's give it a transform so that we're sure that we can actually see it. Okay, so the problem for us right now is that we have this data, but, but we need to translate it to that weird uh, uh, D attribute attribute string that we saw uh, earlier. Uh, what we need to do is um, well, first we can bind our our data to our path, and you'll recognize this. We'll just select all paths of which there are none, and then we bind our data to that path. Uh, this is uh, this will be a bit different since we don't want one path for each uh, data element in our array. We just want to pass this whole array and create a single line out of it. So the way we do that is simply to pass in the array uh, the data as an array, like that. And then we proceed by using the enter method and we append a path. Now, as we saw earlier, all the path data is stored in this D attribute. So we could just uh, provide this with a long string of all the, uh, the path data, like this. It would be super long. But instead, we will refer to our, um, our path generator that D3 provides us with. So I'll create a, a variable called line in just a second that will translate our data to 
uh, this path data uh, string. So let's do that right now. Var line. And since in this case we want to create a line, we will use the line path generator, which is created uh, by by writing d3.svg.line. And this function has, or, or this method has two, uh, what do you call them, accessor functions. First of all, the x function, which um, I guess rep represents each uh, x coordinate of our line. So we'll make this a function that will return each of these x properties right here. So we'll return dx. And uh, the same thing goes for the y accessor function. Uh, we'll re return dy. Um, so this line right here. So what we, we've done so far is we we bound our data to our empty selection as usual, and then we created a path element for each uh, data element. And since we provided the data as an array, we only have one element. So we uh, we just create we create one path. Then we give all our data to this uh, path generator, which uh, translates this data right here into one of those strange uh, path data um, strings that we saw earlier. Um, so we also need to give this a... we don't want any fill, so we'll say fill none, but we'll give it a stroke, so we'll just get this uh, thin line. Uh, no, stroke, attribute stroke, let's give it the color black, and uh, we can also give it a stroke width of say 10. So let's save and hope. hopefully this works. Nope. Okay, let's see here. Let me pause for a second. Okay, so this uh, this can actually provide a good example of uh, debugging in D3. So if we if we wanted to find out what's wrong, what why our visualization is not showing, we can just head over to our browser and inspect and look at the console, and we get this error message: syntax error, unexpected token, left uh, square bracket at line 17. So let's take a look at that, and at line 17 we immediately see that we don't have any equal sign. So let's save this again, and uh, refresh, and you can see that we have our, our, our line here, which is actually a path. So if we inspect this, you can see that this is a path, and we have uh, uh, this uh, path data path string or whatever you want to call it the d attribute which essentially is our data but translated to a path string so that is the very very basics of creating paths in d3 i think well at least my plan is that in the next video we'll um, take a look at a slightly more co uh, complex path uh, that we can create in D3 and that is well I won't tell you because I'm not entirely sure that I will speak about that but yeah I'll see you in the next video